So anyway, uh, hello everyone. This is Scratch and Jack, your host for tonight. The cross the not the cross the pond. I missed that. Cross the pond again. That's the second week in a row. <laughs> <laughs> With the the Sunday hangout and. Uh, and I have uh, had computer troubles, and it looks like I still am. So if I sound a little choppy, it's because this new computer is new. I don't know. What do I know? Uh, and I am still wearing underwear through the whole ordeal. Amazing Plastic is a, is a, a Google Plus community of all models of all shapes and sizes, interest genres, and skill levels who like to share their builds with one another, their tips and tricks, and to revel in, in one another's skill modeling achievements. And today uh, we have uh, joining us uh, members of Amazing Plastic. Um, well, let's start with Bob. How are you doing, Bob? Hey, how are you tonight, Jack? I'm doing good. I'm going to try to download Pro Studio one more time uh -oh. while we're on the air. Uh -oh. So if I drop out, just keep talking. <laughs> okay. So I'm Bob. How's everybody? Surviving the storms over here in St. Louis. And glad to be here. Uh-huh. And then uh, while it's storming, what are you building? Uh, I'm working on the Mini Enterprise E. Oh, uh-huh. And I just finished the GTO a day or two ago. And then uh, I just got in a, a duck. So I'm going to start on. Oh, sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, I, let's see if I can see it here. Uh, back again. Yeah, there we go. You're back on my screen. What were you showing? Hold it up again, Bob. Back. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice aircraft. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, you're a sci-fi builder that builds all kinds of things. Uh, do, do I get you right? Yeah, I'm working, yeah, I'm working on a Mini-E right now, too. Uh-huh. Ready for getting ready well, for That would be the 2500 scale, wouldn't it? You're right. Okay. Get, getting ready to start the decaling on it while we're sitting here tonight. I'll probably start decaling it. Cool. Cool. That's uh, actually it's a very it's actually a fun build. Uh, you just do a base color and just decal it, and it's done. Yeah. Although the decals would, uh, if you don't do it in an organized way, it'll kind of drive you nuts. Because <laughs> <laughs> I certainly and then and when I wanted to clear coat it, I ended up painting it silver. I don't know. It's just me as a modeler. <laughs> Next up, we have James. How you doing, James? I'm doing fine there, Jack. Yeah, finally was able to get back into doing some work on my 329 this weekend. And finally getting some more skin on this wing. Oh, wow. That's looking beautiful. Uh, more skin. Wow. Yeah. Got them both done today up to that stage anyway. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, well, how long have you been working on this? Since the first of March. Okay, it's uh, so that's about two, average. Three, that's, uh, three to four months to do a build. It's about average. Wow. Um, <laughs> if I spend three or four hours, I'm already over it. <laughs> <laughs> And you're saying that this is almost done? No, I've got, I got. If I can keep at it, I've, I can probably get it done in about two weeks. If. And uh, let me explain to our viewers. Uh, he builds paper models. So <laughs> what are you doing on a plastic model uh, community? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're still scale models. Well, that is true. Yeah, that that's is the whole thing. And it is the ultimate scratch build. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. <laughs> and uh, so that was a voice from um, Jay. How you doing, Jay? I am doing fantastic. And uh, no, I am not talking into a treble. This is a uh, wind cover because I've got a fan blowing in here on the microphone. I, I've been building a lot of 1950s style uh rocket ships lately um, this week. In fact, I, I uh, started a new site on Google+. Plus. I'm not sure if it's okay to plug it or not, but I'm going to. Uh, uh -huh. It's called uh, Robots, Ray Guns, and Rocket Ships, and it's all dedicated to the old uh, science fiction 
science fiction of future past, you know, what what you know, the old rocket ships and stuff from the 30s, 40s, 50s and such like that. Uh, this one I is primed, but it needs uh, obviously a little more work. I'm 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 still getting the seams. This is a uh, the kit was called a Mars Lander. Yeah. It was actually a Disney uh, design from 19. I want to say 57. I, I I could be wrong about that, but it was uh, it was used in a in a uh, animated form in a Disney. Uh, how we are going to get into space pro uh, thing. It'll be painted white and uh, with, you know, other other colors and things like that on it. And I've got a base I've already started that is going to be a Mars Mars red base with, you know, dust and stuff. So I'll, I'll dirty up the bottom of it and such. Mm -hmm. um, this is a monogram kit that I had when I was a kid. And it looked just awful. This was a originally released in 19... This version looks much better. Again, it's just primed. This was a Moonlander design from 1958. That's when oh, this model nice. was released. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be painted a little bit of an off-white and uh, USAF uh, decals put on it. Some of the tanks will be different colors and things like that. This mm -hmm. one, by the way, is lighted. Uh, there are windows that you can't see because they're covered with primer right now, but there is a strip of LEDs inside here that will light it up when it's sitting. And this one went together so much nicer than the one I built back when I was, you know, 12. So that one's going to look kind of nice. And the third one I just really started. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Um, this is this is a completely scratch built. This is just the basic hull. But what I'm building is the uh, Polaris from the old television series, uh, Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. I can show you what it looks like real quick here. <coughs> oh, come on. Work for me. That's, that's uh, the actor who played Tom Corbett, and that is the only model of the Polaris that was ever built. And then they almost never used it on the show because it was too big. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, but, but I've always kind of liked that, and so that's why I'm uh, that's why I'm building one of those. I just I've mm -hmm. I've always loved the old rocket ships and things like that, and I started on the monkey mobile. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that was this is supposed to be the across the pond uh, hangout uh, community build, I guess, uh, to electrify a car. And that's that was your choice. Yeah, the Monkey Mobile was my choice, and I did get started on it. Mm -hmm. I, even, I even managed to find some uh, Ferrari red, or rather Italian red, paint, which is the correct color um, for the main body. So. Right, right. Well, um, next up we have Phil. How you doing, Phil? I'm good, thanks. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, so. At the moment, I'm working totally on the Missouri. I took a uh, made a big stride forward this weekend, laying down a colour on the hull, which is good. And I'm so um, that has to set up now for a good week or so because I've used craft paint, and I want to make sure it's well and truly cleared, or oh, cured, because there's a lot of masking uh, to put the next layers of the dazzle pattern on. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, let's. While that's curing, I'll move on with the horrors with the tiny photo etch and uh, building all the bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. My 350th refit, um, I had an argument with the Star Trek gods, and <laughs> we had a real falling out, and unfortunately they won. Mm. So I, I have another 350th arriving next week where we can start again, but this time... Um, with, with a revised attitude towards what I was doing. What happened? I broke it. <laughs> well, well, without without dis divulging the details of what I was doing with it, and you know what I was doing with it, um, I had put so much effort into painting the, the, the components before I put them together. 
Mm -hmm. Because I was using the particular color, I decided Smart Fill decided oh, there's no need to light block inside. So what I ended up with was more light leaks than you could poke a stick at. So I spent as much time masking the model again, masking all the windows, all the components, all the LEDs to keep painting uh, that. I kind of, you know, it started going downhill at that point, you know, because that wasn't the way I planned to do it. So it became a patch up, a patch up, a patch up, a patch up. And I was getting more and more disillusioned with it. And then when I was putting the, uh, mounting the neck to the um, hull, I, I broke two parts because I probably applied a little bit much force. Mm -hmm. And so I said, that is it. You know, I'd actually spent more on paint than I had on the actual plastic, so I decided that's it. I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to try and resurrect this. It'll just look uh, like something that's been, you know, mucked which, up. Um, which model was that? Uh, the Polar Lights 350 at 350. You should make it into a battle-damaged one, you know, like Christina would, uh, yeah. just, just, just before it entered the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I actually thought about that, but there was three parts in it that I actually want. One was my Tenor Controls um, oh. controller, so I ripped the hull open to get that out. Yeah. And my uh, Night Rider uh, Chiller Grill chasers. Mm -hmm. They were eight bucks a piece, and I wanted those back. Yeah. <laughs> but, but actually, it's sitting there in like about four parts at the moment serving as an example of what not to do. So when I start the next one, I'll just refer to that and say, don't do that. Yeah. Do it differently. Right. So, so yeah, I'm having fun with the Missouri. I'm off spaceships for the moment. Although, you know, you're talking about you know, your old spacecraft. I was browsing, um, was it MPC at, at mm -hmm. Round 2 Models? Yeah. And that old moon rover with the really wide wheels on it. Yeah. I looked at that and said, gee, I wouldn't mind building that. It's just kind of coincidence that uh -huh. you, know, you start talking about the old stuff and there's something out of the 60s, I think, isn't it? Uh, either or either that or, well, yeah, that would be 60s. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I will. Then I'll have something to post on your new site. That would be great. Cool. <laughs> Well, I've been uh, trying to, um, apparently this new computer don't like to have many windows open. I tried opening a few so I can screen share, but I do have a screen share. And let's see. This would be amazing plastic. I think it will be this. Okay, Bob, explain yourself. Explain myself. Yes, look at, uh, look at uh, what I'm screen sharing. Ah, one 1969 GTO Judge that my brother bought for me for my birthday in 1994. <laughs> I just finally got around to uh, building it. Do you know what I like about your builds? The paint job. Look at that paint job. It's a, it's a midnight blue that has this metal fleck in it. Fleck, yeah. Yeah. It's a luck. It's a dupla color perfect match electron blue for Honda. Nice. Honda cars. Nice. Doesn't that doesn't that dupla color perfect match stuff lay down nicely? Oh yes, it does. Yeah. Very well. It's like glass. Yeah. That's gorgeous. And it, it it is a a very pretty car, and I actually like the contrast of the interior because I remember the '70s all too well, and the cars were really sexy like this one is but they really contrasted the interior you would have a dark car with a light interior and a light right. car with a dark interior and all kinds of crazy stuff going on it was just the era in which these uh, cars were designed yeah um, the most popular color for that one was that orange and I just I hated that orange car so and of course that's what color the kit came in was the orange yeah so <laughs> I, that blue so I spent two days just getting rid of the orange yeah Right, right, and um, well, I, um, <laughs> I I don't know if the viewers out there are uh, a lot of the members. Uh, everybody here knows my luck with 
I'm a sci-fi guy, and my love with and the Enterprise. I just can't build one. <laughs> it's just not meant to be. And so I, I started, you know, I really want to, you know, between my cars, I want to, you know, build a sci-fi uh, kit. And um, I don't know, I've posted, you know, what I've been building, the Katinga and the D7, and now I'm doing the Vorcha class. I, I just started it today, and I got a nacelle put together, and I have it all lit. Of course, it shouldn't be blinking like that. Oh, yeah. And yeah, but it looked cool. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got a nacelle together. Um, of course, uh, I, I, I'm having really good luck with uh, a Klingon ships, and somebody made this <laughs> the comment that I went over to the dark side. I said, no, that's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny you... Um, Mentioned that I picked up my uh, Romulan Warbird today, which has been, you know, just waiting for some attention. And before I went any further with it, I did a light test, and one of the LEDs, um, everything was working. All of a sudden, one of the LEDs just went pop, not working. So, back in the box with that one, put the lid on, <laughs> put it on the top shelf. I said, I will take that apart sometime in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, for me, as far as this Vorcha, this is actually a very small kit. Um, I think the whole model will end up being about a foot long, which is unusually small. It's probably a 2400 scale. I might be wrong, but or maybe a 1400 scale. Um, and the windows are very tiny. And I just want to ask you guys, is there anything smaller than a 132nd drill bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get. You know, um, I got eighty thousands. Yeah, you can get uh, from from any any hobby store that sells train, you know, train supplies and things like that. You can uh, get a set of uh, a set of mini drills that go down, you know, so far, so far you'd be afraid to use it. You know, Jack, I'm not sure how this will come up, but this and is yeah, there's those as well. These are um, these have a one eighth inch shank on them, which means they go into your Dremel, and the drill bits go down to um, actually it's written on them. Let's see if I can read it. This one is point zero eight one, I think. Anyway, they're tiny, and you get a whole set of them. And these are what I use to drill the lights in the um, Warbird. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't seen them at Harbour Freight, but you can, uh, in, in their store, but you can get them from Harbour Freight online. Yeah, they, they do have those in the Harbour Freight in, in, the, in the store by me, so some stores do carry them. And they're not expensive. I think they're about six bucks. Yeah. Get yourself you get two a packs. Of yeah. You get two packs of them, so. Yeah. Yep. The only thing, yeah, look at those. Just step like that. Yeah, these are really good. The only thing that you need to worry about with those is they are brittle. Yeah, they're brittle. Yeah. You want to run them slowly. Run them slowly and keep them as close to the chuck as possible. Yes. Yeah. So oh, put yeah, as I, much I, I, inside the chuck as you can. I yep. would think so. Yes, I would think so. But I think my issue is I would be so touchy with it. I would probably want it in a uh, pin vise. Uh, for all those who don't yeah. know what pin vice is, it's uh, a thing like this. Yeah. It's basically a drill without the motor. And yeah, in that case, you can get those at Harbor Freight as well. They come in a little mm -hmm. packet, and you get them all the way down to nothing. Yeah, that's yeah. a one thirty second right there, and I'm afraid that's uh, too big. And mm -hmm. uh, But it is big enough to hold a 0.5 millimeter piece of fiber optic. Uh, I want to use a 0.25 millimeter uh, fiber optic. In fact, uh, I think I'm thinking I'm crazy for wanting to do this. Just um, go to Harbor Freight's website if you don't have a Harbor Freight near you and just have a look at their mini drills. I had gone to Harbor Freight and they didn't have even a 137. Yeah. The other uh, place you can check is electronic supplies. Electronic those supplies, used, yes. Those are used to drill holes in PC boards. So another thing, an, another thing. If you have like a uh, a Menards or some place like that, or any place that sells a good selection of uh, Dremel tools, Dremel does have 
a set of very very tiny drill bits that come in a little plastic tube, but they get they get very very small, much smaller than one thirty second. Mm -hmm. I was even considering just taking a piece of thin wire, heating up, and melting it through. <laughs> Actually, I, I just looked for those mini drills. They're three dollars seventy nine for like twenty bits, but mm -hmm. they in store only. Where where at? Harbour Freight. But oh, and what size is it? Well, there's multiple sizes. It's a whole pack mm -hmm. um, for four dollars. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's a pack, but I, I would want something. I would want multiple. Well, you get like the thirty second one. I have dozens of them. I, I bought them on eBay. You get three mil down to half a mil. Like a, uh, a Menards or someplace like that. Mm -hmm. Place a good selection of uh, Dremels. Dremel does have. Set of very, very tiny drill bits. They get very, very small, much smaller than 30 seconds. Yeah. Hi, Joe. <laughs> How are you doing, Joe? Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Joe. Hi, 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 Joe. Uh, can you all hear me? Yeah. I can hear you fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I uh, just wanted to say hi to Joe. I think Joe was uh, um, adding in on that. Um, there is something else I want to do a screen share of, and this is uh, something that uh, Christina couldn't join us today. And Christina has been working on this, and she is doing the Titanic cannon. <laughs> See if we can get into this right there. Sorry, Joe, but there was a lot of side uh, whatever. I couldn't uh, even hear myself. Can you all hear me? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, and can you see Christina's uh, Titanic? Yes. Yeah. You and, see that, uh, that little boat that's up on the uh, computer? Yes. That's the whaling ship or that she's building for her. Um, she's doing a diorama of the uh, bird of prey rescuing yes. the whales. Yes. And uh, that's that's the uh, scratch built whaling boat she made. I do believe I can uh, bring her page up. Of course, uh, my uh, computer is dreadfully slow. Uh, it can do one page at a time, so it looks like I won't be doing multiple pages. Uh, uh, well, she's doing the Titanic, and her she took a photograph of it, and it looked like it was the actual thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm I'm not sure is if anybody uh, out there is like, oh, come on, too far. Yeah, that that was a great photograph. Can you see Christina's uh, Titanic? Yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, Joe, I have to mute you. I'm sorry. No, no insult. No, nothing because we just there's a lot of feedback coming from uh, from you. Doing a diorama. Sorry, Joe, but I just can't just can't hear uh, what I'm saying here. <laughs> but this is a photograph of uh, her build. It looked like the real thing. Yeah. Um, God, I wish she was here. She was a little tired. She went to bed early. Of course, it's one o'clock in the morning there. And this is the uh, fishing boat that uh, she's going to do a diorama of. And that's probably about an inch and a half to two inches yeah. long, from what I understand. Yeah. Pretty good stuff, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So um, your guy's saying I can just go get those drill bits over at Harbor Freight. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Yep. Yeah, um, perfect for the pin bus, those ones. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever used uh, fiber optics, though, in conjunction with trying to find the right drill bit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, uh, us I usually use the same things that, that uh, Phil uses, those, those uh, carbide bits. Huh? Uh, the, the carbide bits that he showed you, because they, um, they're perfect for, uh, you know, for drilling in and, and uh, being able to run fiber optic through it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that Heath made it back. How are you doing, Heath? Yeah, I'm good. I think the camera's working. I'm not quite sure. I don't think so. 
Well, we've got the logo. You know what? I think it's in the air around the world that everybody's having computer mm-hmm. problems. What do you think about that, uh, Phil? It <laughs> keeps you <Yeah>. in business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sadly. Yeah, it comes, it comes in waves. It's uh-huh. the sunspots. You know. <laughs> the position of the moon. Oh, full moon. Actually, yeah. on our support board at work, I have a moon warning. It works through the phases of the moon and warns the techs when we're approaching a full moon. Uh-huh. And when we're uh-huh. on a full moon, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, talk about the color because the comment that you made on this posting is actually quite intensive. <laughs> Oh, you mean the way I arrived at the color? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I decided I had to mix my own color. And because of the quantity I needed, it was prohibitively expensive to use um, high-quality um, modeling acrylics, no matter who I got them from. So I, did, I just went down to Michael's, and I bought a whole bunch of um, craft acrylics, you know, which are like a dollar a bottle. And a uh, big bottle of white, big bottle of black. And then I sat down um, Saturday, actually, while you, you and I were chatting. And I scientifically measured drop by drop to come up with a color. Mm-hmm. And I noted down what I did. So, of course, then I had to convert that from drop by drop to gallon by gallon kind <laughs> of. Uh, right. So my recipe, the way I listed it, that's the way it started off. It was three parts white, one part black, one part cerulean blue, two parts navy blue, mix and test. And that was the original recipe. It just didn't come out the same. So then it got to a squirt of this, a squirt of that. Oh, I'll put more of this, empty that whole thing in. Uh, and, and I eventually arrived at that car and said, Good enough. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what, that's what Danny uses 99% of the time, is he makes his own paints using the, the craft acrylics, and they look great. Well, yeah, I, was, I have to admit, I was on such a model of that size, I, I was a little bit apprehensive. Um, but I did thin it with uh, golden uh, airbrush medium. Yeah. Uh, when trying to just thin it out, I used it, because I've used the golden medium before, and I kind of trusted it. Mm-hmm. And I also went to Harbour Freight and bought myself a high volume, low pressure uh, spray gun mm-hmm. for thirteen dollars. Yeah, and laid it on with that, and I put the second coat on today after a little bit of a wet sand down. It was, uh, it looks fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really happy with it. But as I say, you know, I need to let it cure for several days to make sure it doesn't lift back. It shouldn't because I did prime the um, surface with a, a proper uh, plastic primer, so it should be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Um, I think uh, I'm going to screen share um, something a lot of fun, and it is a pie chart that Christina posted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those who can't read it from your screens being so small, let's start at 12 o'clock there and go like a regular clock. The orange is sanding. That's how much time you spend on sanding. And the purple is waiting things for it to dry. Okay? And, of course, the uh, dark green is swearing. And, of course, the lighter green is time waiting for deliveries. And then, of course, the little red pie slice is actual productive modeling. <laughs> uh, do you all agree with that? <laughs> you know, she only missed one. Yeah, she she made that while we were talking about that, and uh, she only missed one, which was uh, starting over because you screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know that all too well. I think I think the sliver is uh, active modeling for me, and the rest of the pie is starting over again. That's me. <laughs> Forget the sanding, the painting, you know, just start over again. <laughs> but that was, I mean, Saturday, it was so true. All three of us are sitting there. Every one of us are waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> yeah, we're all looking at each other, right? And it, uh, it uh, came to, we came to notice that uh, waiting for paint to dry is another way to say you're doing a private thing to yourself, so. Yeah. 
Uh, but anyhow, um, I, I thought that was very amusing that she uh, posted that. She made that, is that right? Yes, she made that. In fact, she made that in about, I would say, less than a minute while we were talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something I'm going to uh, screen share. I haven't uh, seen much of uh, Jenny Waring's things, but Jenny has been posting lately on Amazing Plastic, and Jamie... Is, uh, has his hangouts of scale modeling, and he's been painting a lot of Warhammer. I wish Richard was with us. He's more familiar with Warhammer, and this is his latest, which uh, I don't know who this guy is, but he's pretty cool looking. Mm -hmm. You can have and, a lot of fun with color, can't you, on these things? Yeah, very, very colorful stuff that uh, he's done. And, and I've known uh, Jamie to be a... Um, what do you call it? A car modeler. Yeah. But he got hooked on Warhammer, and we will never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He got started like, what, six months ago? No, not six yeah. months. Four months ago, and he's like, I haven't seen him. Ago. It does that. And that, that little figure is only like maybe an inch and a half tall. Oh, um, really? You know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just one game piece. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh, well, there is something else I'm trying to bring up, but it's a long, uh, long, arduous process. So uh, why don't you all uh, talk about something? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so, so how about that Kentucky Derby, eh? <laughs> what? No, well, say that again. Said, how about that Kentucky Kentucky Derby, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought Kentucky was in the United States and not in Canada. Yeah, but Richard's been rubbing off on me. Oh, uh, I know. I've been saying A a lot, too, but he doesn't really say it, though. That's a... Yeah, well, I don't think he's really Canadian. I, I think he's he's a transplant. <laughs> <laughs> From where? <laughs> there is one picture I'm looking for. It is, a, I think, a fantastic idea for a diorama. I have never built them. Who here has? Dioramas? Oh, a, a no. lot of, I built a lot yeah. of dioramas. I built some. Haven't for a while. Well, part with some wisdom, uh, you guys. Um, I oh, here it is. Here's a picture. It's just one of those random things that uh, the community um, get postings for, and. Uh, I, I've already figured one out. It's one of the scenes from the original Star Wars movie. It's the trench chasing. That's what I want to do. And I got the models for it. And I was going to build a trench, but when I saw photographs of it, the trench was blurred. Mm. So I, I have to find a way to do some clever model building as well as you know pain, painting just to make it look like it's in motion. I think you could, oh, to make look like it's in motion. Oh. Right, 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 right. That's what the screen grabs are. They're, they're blurred. Wow. Um, and that's a couple of months ago, he, um, he did that, uh, I guess, a World War II in, like, the Northern African theater, like, next to a cliffside with a jeep and a little oasis of water, you know. Um, well... When I saw this particular um, picture, wow. I thought it was a yeah. dark drama. Oh, yeah. But it's not. It's for real. This is a Japanese war plane yeah. from World War II is lying underwater uh, in a, sh a shallow water off the islands of Guam. And I just think that would make a pretty darn interesting diorama. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yes, it would. That would make a really neat one. Especially with the little guy, you know, uh, paddling his little kayak on top there. Uh, let's see. If, does this uh, zoom in? Let's see. Oh, yeah, see. That's what it's doing. I love this new computer. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. That's as far as it'll go. Yeah. That's cool. So what kind of dioramas have you guys built? 
I don't, oh. I don't build any. <laughs> anything? No, I, I have not done a dialogue. Um, <laughs> usually, they're science fiction, like like uh, uh, spacecraft sitting on sitting on the moon, or you know, with with cliffs in the background, or um, one that I'm still working on is the uh, the ship from When Worlds Collide, the Ark, going up the side of the mountain. I've got the the mountain built, and I've I've been uh, I've gotten to the point where I'm putting miniature trees now on the mountain mm -hmm. uh, while the rocket is going up. So uh, you know things like that. Um, a lot of times, what I, I've done I've done uh, World War II planes where it's showing them sitting on a homemade runway with uh, trucks nearby refilling and things like that. Sure. Sure, and uh, when it comes to dioramas, now models are kind of easy to figure out. You just hang them from the ceiling, put them on a shelf. What do you do with the diorama besides, I don't know, I'm just asking. <laughs> well, it's pretty much got to sit on a shelf. You know, yeah, it's got to sit on a desk, you know, or a table, or on the piano, or <laughs> on the floor next to the couch, you know. <laughs> It's got to be someplace that's visible or it's meaningless. If it's sitting mm -hmm. up high on a shelf, there's it's a total. Other than the effort to do it, it's it's a yeah. it's it's a waste of uh, of time. Mm -hmm. Unless you got a good way to display it so that anyone that comes in can see it, or you even you can see it. Sure, yeah. sure. And you know, there's there's one thing that crossed my mind not too long ago, and that was, you know, I'm run. I need to invest money in shelves and I have a wall and I can put shelves on it, I can put the models on it, but once it's filled, it's like, what do I do? And yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of model builders out there with this dilemma because we just like to build. We like to build, 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 and we just don't stop. We're like crazy people, you know? But, you know, um, I thought of like having a, like, you know how in art galleries have paintings, they have shows for paintings? Mm -hmm. We have shows for model builders, huh? Well, you you could do you could go you could go you could go with uh, like archive shelves. You could uh, you could take like any of the uh, build up cabinet as like uh, bookshelves or like that, and you could angle the shelves so that they display better and stuff like that. So that you can improve uh, the visibility of the models. True. So there's things you can do. When my mom when my mom passed away, uh, I inherited this. Uh, hutch that she had. It's got, you know, a drawer and some uh, some cabinets down below, but it has about a five foot wide by four foot tall by one foot deep mm -hmm. set of shelves behind glass that slide out of the way, you know, and I have several models in that because the fact that it's behind glass means that they don't get dusty. Okay, the Space 1999, the Alien. Yeah, I was, I was, I, you've, you were talking about the dioramas and Jay talking about the, um, you know, what he's currently building. Yeah, that was what I was looking at, Jay. Oh, okay. So I think I might build that now and could be good to put it in a diorama since it was a, a moon buggy. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah. 1975. Yep. <laughs> cool. Well, I did find a diorama that our uh, good friend Bill Tate in the UK has done. And for your non-Star Trek fans, uh, you might think, you know, I don't know what it is. I'll tell you what it is. It is uh, the ultimate enemy of the Star Trek United Federation of Planets, mm -hmm. Borg. And he's made these figures. He scratched, built their pods. These people are half machine, half uh, biological, and they, they have these pods, not really pods, but these stations where they step into to regenerate. And uh, Bill is a pretty large uh, Star Trek fan. But I think even for the non-fan, you got to appreciate his work. It's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> he sculpted all those figures out of clay. Everything else is scratch built. And mm -hmm. the little plasma wheel in the back there actually works. Yes, uh, there's that. Uh, you can, uh, what do you call it? Um, Spencer's, one of those weird gift shops used to have them. Oh, yeah, you can still get them there. You can still get them in, in that size, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
He's got his diorama. You know, uh, look, well, let me go back one picture. <laughs> uh, I don't know where this comes. Go back one picture. Here we go. Uh, right at the top here. <laughs> it's got this gingerbread on. I don't know if that's what you would use to hang it up, but uh, it looks more like. You know what it looks like? He's put this on. Those uh, electronic boards. You know the ones that you poke, you know, resistors in, LEDs in, and wire. Breadboard, yeah. Breadboards. That's what it looks like. That he's all uh, put together. It's just, oh my gosh. I watched this guy put this together, and each time he did something, it just looked better and better and better. And he didn't stop until. Oh, look at that screen. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Now, there's a, it's actually, a, wow. I don't know if I would recognize any of the things here out of common, I don't know, common everyday things. I certainly must made made this uh, diorama. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what dioramas are uh, for all you watching. And, uh, yeah, model builders do, do dioramas as well. Uh, I remember... I remember when I was a kid, I used to di diorama in like second and third grade. We had to read a, a story and build a diorama around the story. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? No, I didn't go to school with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a one-finger salute for you, mister. <laughs> hey, Bob, was that one of your dioramas that you had up before? Sir? Bob? Yeah. You had a screen share of a diorama. Up. I... Yeah, uh, let me get back to it here. I was trying to find a better picture of it. I've got 8 million pictures on my computer right now. Well, that's uh, pretty good. Just don't get a virus. You'll never retrieve them. Oh, I've got them, <laughs> I've got them saved on another. Uh, back to it. This was an eight by eight inch diorama that I we built. I built for a contest. That's sweet. Oh wow! Yeah, very neat. Wow, that is really cool. The water is actually uh, zero depth. It's all done with uh, white glue and future and paint. Oh really? Yeah. So right it here. is. You didn't, you didn't even buy the special stuff for that. No. That's future white glue and paint. Yep, I painted it. All just painted, then put the white glue on it to give it a little bit of texture, and sure. then uh, the future gave it the high gloss. Sure. Sweet. And the grasses all came from from Michael's. That stuff for putting in the artificial plants in mm -hmm. the pot. Huh. And then they, Train car, no track, and a sign. That's all there was. But yeah, I do dioramas. I do railroading, so I do dioramas all the time. Mm. Everything is a di giant diorama. Yeah, I can go get one of mine if you want, Jack. Take about a minute to go get it. But... Sure. Sure. Go, okay. go right ahead. I'd like to see some more about yeah. that. Cause, uh, yeah. That so, yeah, the last, di last diorama I did was actually my Pat Labor project. Was... You know, with the whole maintenance facility and that, mm -hmm. that that was probably you know closest to you know, the last diorama really that I did. You mean that robot figure that you had? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, yeah, that would go as a diorama. Sure, of course. Sure, sure, of course. <laughs> well, it would. Oh, and I'm still trying to find some more photographs to share. And I think this is working out better instead of doing it all one clip at the beginning of the show. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually kind of cool to do it in the meantime uh, while we're talking because it, uh, the diorama idea came up. I, I was hanging out with Christina, and she's wanting to do dioramas. And, of course, that little boat, that little fishing boat uh, she wants yeah. to do out of the movies. And, of course, I want the trench scene because that, that was the first scene – uh, I was actually like totally thrilled over um, mm -hmm. movies, and I was about I'd say, uh, oh crap! I was about about twelve or thirteen years old. I'd say twelve. No, 
I was about a high school age. I was in junior high, so that would make me what? Uh, 14. 14, 15, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's the first. That's the first time I was really like literally out of my seat um, in that scene. Mm -hmm. my, my older brother <laughs> kept pulling me back down in his seat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we were in a front row, so I did have a lot of leg room. So, yeah. Uh, that, I, I remember okay. I had to be the front row because the movie theater was always always just so filled. Yeah. All right, uh, Jay, show us what yeah. you got. Hold on a second. I'm going to open my window so I can see what it's seeing. This is a uh, 1950s style rocket ship sitting on uh, sitting on the moon. Everything on this is scratch built. The uh, rocks in the back were uh, styrofoam that I carved and then I covered with uh, Durham's water putty and then painted with a bunch of washes. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the base down here is, oh boy, it's uh, the, the, this, uh, what is this stuff? Uh, there's this stuff that, that, that you can get that... Uh, uh, for recreating scenes and things like that, different sized rocks and such. And uh, the little people down here, the little guys, come on, focus, you bugger. Those were um, N scale, oh, come on, I know you can focus. There we go. The little astronauts down here are uh, N scale. Um, they were actually road workers <coughs> that I uh, built backpacks for <coughs> and uh, used um, jewelry beads for the helmets and had them, you know, around in different places. I added a bunch of fallen gravel and such like that in the back to. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what what to represent, and I even put a burn mark underneath the uh, underneath where the engine supposedly was uh, sure. leaving dust. Sweet, but mm -hmm. uh, but you know y y you can see compared to my face here how big it is. Yeah, it's that's not, not that's, that's actually not too big. It's actually a very uh, comfortable size to have around the house. Yeah, it's not huge, and it it doesn't take up a lot of room, which I like. Um, there's, there, uh, one of our members, uh, Nick, last name, uh, Vildis, I guess, Va uh, Valdis, Vildis, uh, he's very, he's all, he's such a good modeler, and he is always so supportive of other people, and, uh, he's, uh, got a build here for the Jimmy Fund, uh, yeah. that's, uh, put on hold for right now, and, uh, this is a Corsair, Oh yeah. So let me go back to the one shot that uh, that that one right there. That is such a uh, great scene. That's, that's incredible. And of course, he's got a little LED light inside, and the smoke is actually cotton. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, he combed cotton, and of course, he lightly uh, painted it to look like smoke. And uh, if I were to Make a suggestion for him. I think the propeller should be spinning. If he's well, got, if he has, be crashing because the propeller stopped. Oh, that's true. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I stupid or what? <laughs> <laughs> the engine's on fire for crying out loud. What do you want? <laughs> Sorry, Nick. <laughs> uh, so it's actually uh, battery powered and uh, really cool, really cool. And uh, I hell, I would love to buy it and say that I made it. <laughs> of course, nobody would believe me. And of course, nobody would believe me because his his work is uh, extraordinary. Uh, mine is not. My work isn't quite like that. What are you saying, Jack? I spoiled you when I showed you that spinning propeller there a couple weeks ago. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I, I I thought of that. I thought you know, what, next time I build planes, I should uh, consider putting a little motor in there, and mm -hmm. just make the thing spin. Um, I, since we're talking about dioramas, this is probably one of the smaller ones. I think this airplane is maybe about 
this wide from t wingtip to wingtip. Yeah. And uh, so dioramas can be very tiny and can tell a huge story. Uh, and uh, and that's uh, dioramas will tell a story. And that's why that's why yeah. that's part of uh, you know model building. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, where are we? Um, we've got about five minutes, kids. What do you want to talk about? Oh, well, how about that Kentucky Derby? No, we did that before. No, yeah, we, we did that already. <laughs> <laughs> you did say something. Uh, the one thing that burns your ass is a three and a half oh. foot flame. Yeah. Yeah, that really burns my ass. I had, I had one and a half to sell done while we were, while we were sitting there talking. Yeah, while we were talking, I got the scene done on the side of the uh, on the on the side of the Polaris here. So. <laughs> All right. Well, you I'm know, not even in my shop. I'm up in the library. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you know, I'd like to uh, thank um, Liam. Liam did the across the pond yesterday, and I think he just did a fantastic job. In fact, I, I, I think the man can't do wrong. He's just extraordinary. And he was under the gun there because he was having technical issues as well. And uh, he sure recovered from it and carried on. And uh, if you want to see it, uh, just check out the amazing plastic uh, Google Plus community, and you'll find a link to the video, of course, this video is going to post uh, probably by tomorrow. Um, so anyway, I'd like to thank Liam. He helped me out. I was in a really big bind. My computer crashed. I think it was Wednesday night that I found out because uh, I went on to do the invitations because I usually do them Wednesday prior, and the computer just wasn't working. And, um, mm -hmm. it took me back to the weekend prior. And I just realized, don't, don't, don't unload, don't download anything from CBS. I was trying to download a, a TV show uh, from CBS, and something happened. Not to say uh, CBS did it; it was just hanging on to what CBS was doing. So I got, I got nabbed real bad. Anyway, and I'd like to especially thank all the viewers here, and of course, um, without you, and we wouldn't have a community as vibrant as it is. Uh, check out community every day. There's some, today it just kept ticking down. There's so many posts even just today. Mm -hmm. uh, take check it out because it's all good stuff. And of course, I'm trying to find a darn list for <laughs> our sponsors. <laughs> and I, I do know one of them. And one of them is uh, Tena Controls. Ralph Tenaglia over at Tena Controls. Uh, he builds uh, circuit boards uh, for mostly sci-fi, but he's gone into other areas such as cars, and he's going to do other things as well. Uh, at Tenet Controls, they do bring models to life. Also, Vallejo Paints. Uh, to Vallejo.com, uh, you can find out what kinds of paints they have. It's all acrylic. Um, yeah, you can also buy them at the Internet near you as well as a store uh, on the Internet. Uh, so anyway, and there's also Iwata. Uh, you're going to use that uh, paint. Uh, use Iwata. Iwata, Iwata, Iwata. Get this one. Here it is. Uh, Iwata Medea. Iwata Medea air, airbrushes, yes. Um, check them out on iwatamedea.com. Aztec Dummy, that would be Lou Damaso's thing. Uh, you can find him not just on, I don't think he's on eBay anymore, but you can find him. Just, uh, you know, Google Aztec Dummy. Those are painting masks for. He just launched, launched his website this week. Oh, he's, he's going to have a website. Yeah. Just there, was one, yeah. there was one picture that I was looking for, and you know what? I can't let the show go on, uh, go off the air without you guys seeing this. I don't know if you guys seen it. It was somebody who took a picture of their model, but anyway. Uh, and that would be also PM Hobbycraft, uh, pmhobbycraft.ca. If you want to know where you can get your 10% discount, just go onto YouTube and look up Amazing Plastic, the scale model show. And uh, the most recent shows, uh, well, it was posted. Um, it, I can't even. I gotta look at the show and, and, and get the code. You get 10% off from any purchase in the store. So um, anyway, guys, um, I can't seem to find it. It was ba it was a viper in the middle of the air. I don't know how this guy took a picture of it. There was no strings attached to this thing, but he took a picture yeah. of his uh, Battlestar Galactica viper. Yeah. Um, 
Mm. Oh, I got I got to show you guys. I don't know if you've seen it, but oh well, I can't I can't seem to find it. Anyway, uh, thanks guys for showing up and uh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Scratch and Jack Holzer, and I'm going to go wash my underwear so I have another pair to wear next time. We'll talk to you later. Bye now. Bye. Good night.